Okay, for this one, we're going to start out with a little make-believe. Now, there's my little coil I had in the last video. And I induce power into it. And we're going to make believe this little piece of aluminum is actually a bar magnet with a north and south pole. And I told you, you did not have to move the wire. You could move the magnet. And so in this case, we would be moving like this. And each time, one of the poles got close to the wire, it would induce power in the wire. So it would just be constantly going like that. Now it's going to induce power each time it does it. So with each, right here, maximum power, right here, the lowest power. Maximum, lowest, maximum. You might say it this way, maximum positive, maximum negative, maximum positive, maximum ne negative. Okay, that is alternating current. That is how it's produced. Okay, this is a graphical representation of that uh, sine wave. It's called a sine wave. Uh, as this magnet moves its pole, it induces power here. As it rotates like this to where it's lower, this is this little ramp going down to zero. Then it goes back up to the highest peak voltage this way and back down again. And this way is time. So we would go positive volts as this came up to the maximum positive, zero volts, maximum volts negative, zero volts, and on through. So that's uh, really how alternating current is uh, made. It's fairly simple. I don't generally take and put a permanent magnet in there. You can do it, but there's limitations on using that. So you would take and make an electromagnet here. And the electromagnet, you could control the intensity of the magnet by how much power you put through windings that you wrap around this thing. Now here's what one looks like. This is an automotive alternator. And these slip rings here, these uh, are two sides of line. There's windings inside here. And as I put power to these slip rings through brushes, that makes this an electromagnet. As this rotates, it passes some of these things on an iron core uh, on the uh, field winding. And as each one of these poles passes, you can see this is a multiple pole. This is actually a three-phase generator. Uh, we'll talk about that later. But as one of these passes one of the other poles, it induces power into the other pole, and that's how you produce electricity. But you get this same kind of sine wave that we had on this other one. This is your typical sine wave. And you'll see this in all alternating current. So why do we do it this way? Because we want to make fields build and collapse. This is a magnetic field building and collapsing. It's being shown by the voltage. But as a magnetic field gets close to the pole, say the pole on this thing, then it maximizes the voltage. There's also amperage here, but I'm not going to get into that now. As it goes, gets to maximum voltage, and then as it leaves that pole, it goes back down to zero. Well, each time this happens, I build up a magnetic field, just like the one I showed you yesterday in the permanent magnet, and then I collapse a magnetic field. I build one up, 
I collapse. I build one up, I collapse. The positive thing about this is that each time these fields build up and collapse, they induce power in something else. That's how transformers work. A transformer, has, in order to, to actually change voltage, we have to have fields uh, building up and collapsing so that they're crossing the wires. Remember I said this did not have to move. If I had a field that came by it like I had here, it would induce power into it and then it would induce less. Well this is going to be an alternating current. It's going to build up, shut down, build up, shut down. Well each time those fields builds up, then the uh, when we get to the peak, then the field collapses and that field itself crosses the wires. And so as that field crosses the wires, it induces power. So transformers do that in order to be able to uh, change voltages, uh, usually they're step up or step down transformers, something like that. And they do it as I've done on one of my other videos, uh, we can either have them go up or down. Now I'm going to show you a transformer and what it looks like cutaway. Okay, this is a cutaway of a step down transformer similar to the ones I was showing you in the last video. These are for HVAC. The upper windings, you can see they're a fairly large diameter. That's the secondary. The secondary is going to be larger diameter wire uh, because it takes more amperage. Remember, it's, the power has to be the same. If the voltage goes up, the amperage goes down. If the voltage uh, goes down, the amperage has to go up. So it has to have larger wire in it uh, to work properly. And the primary, you have to look fairly close for the primary. It's very small wire. And the reason they put so many wires in here rather than maybe just put a copper bar through the whole thing is that uh, as the, the uh, magnetism crosses the wires, it induces power in each individual wire. So the more wires, the higher the voltage. So even though the uh, bottom one is a smaller area, it has more windings in it. And so the collapsing fields will transfer the voltage from the primary to the secondary in direct proportion to the windings uh, compared to each other. Okay, to recap, uh, you can induce an alternating current into a wire by rotating a magnet or an electromagnet near a coil. You can take that uh, alternating current and use it in something like a transformer to reduce or increase voltage by running it through one set of windings and inducing power into another set of windings on the same device. When we do this, we can raise the voltage or lower the voltage. And that's the wonderful thing about the AC is we can raise and lower its voltage. And the voltage is raised or lowered depending on the windings in the primary and secondary of the transformer. And that is the uh, low voltage transformer.